So let's talk for a moment about this thing called Linux. Linux is a computer operating environment like Microsoft Windows, Apple OS X, and Unix. In fact, the Linux environment is largely based on the look and feel of the very popular and very long-lived Unix operating system. I say the look and feel of Unix from a user's perspective because deep under the hood, Linux and Unix are very different. Linux itself is not an operating system, but instead an operating system core referred to as the kernel. The kernel is Linux's central control program. It sits between the computer's hardware and the user's software and talks to both. Unix has a kernel too, but it uses a different design approach than the Linux kernel. It is the differences between the Unix and Linux kernels that makes these two popular operating systems unique to themselves. Differences aside, Unix users still find Linux very familiar and vice versa. This is because the look and feel and operation of Linux's operating environment was largely inspired by the operating environment of Unix. You can think of Linux as a clone of Unix that continued upon a different evolutionary path, but still retains a considerable number of operational similarities. Linux uses an operating environment known as GNU, which is a recursive acronym for GNU is not Unix. The GNU project created an emulation of the system and programming tools found on Unix and made them freely usable and distributable by anyone because of their release under the GNU General Public License, or GNU GPL for short. Thanks to GNU and the GPL, anyone can run their own Unix or Linux computer for free. The Linux kernel itself is presently licensed under the GNU General Public License version 2. Because both GNU and Linux are free software under the GPL license, they are officially known as GNU Linux, but just referring to them as Linux is what most people do. In case you are wondering if you can use Linux for free in your commercial business or for-profit organization, that would depend on the Linux distribution you want to use. All you need to know for this course is that Kali is completely free to obtain and use, even for commercial for-profit purposes. Most flavors of Linux, what we call distributions or distros, use the same Linux kernel but differ in many other ways. That's why there are so many Linux distros to choose from. You probably recognize at least one or two Linux distros in this list. Oh, that penguin there? That's Tux. He's been the logo for Linux since 1996 and has become one of the most recognizable symbols of the Internet. When you want to form an abstract visualization of what the Linux kernel looks like, think of Tux. When you want to visually depict the Unix kernel, well, think of Corn. A Linux distro is a collection of tools and operating environment wrapped around the Linux kernel. The major differences between distros are the tools they include, the desktop environments they support, and the specific purpose for which the distros were created and their default configurations. And yes, there's also marketing and branding attempting to sway you towards trying out one distro over another, but regardless of each distro's collection of powerful tools and glossy graphical desktops and I can do that better packaging managers, most distros are the same GNU Linux underneath. However, there are a few interesting examples of a distro following its own unique path. Some specialized Linux distributions, such as Google's Android, use a modified Linux kernel that is entirely based on the original Linux kernel and uses a mix of traditional and proprietary tools. That's right, the Android mobile operating system is basically Linux. You might have Linux running in your pocket right now. Apple users don't get away from this either. Your beloved Mac OS X is actually a graphical shell program running on top of a distribution of Unix, originally created for Steve Jobs' next computer. And that iPhone in your pocket? Yep, iOS is a variant of Unix too. It seems that both Linux and Unix rarely find favor with the same users, but they are both quite common and necessary in our modern world. 